Well, I think you just have to look out at the river today. You know, in the 1980s when I testified, I said that what the effect of global warming uh, on the climate, the main regional effect is on the increasing the extremes of the hydrologic cycle. That means that because as the atmosphere gets warmer, it holds more water vapor. So when you do get rains, you can get heavier rains and you can get heavier snowfalls and you can therefore get greater floods. But at the same time, at times and places when it's dry, the increased temperature and heating will cause more intense droughts and forest fires. And here in the United States, we're seeing both of them at the same time. The floods uh, on the Missouri and the uh, fires in Texas and New Mexico. And in China, they're seeing the same thing. They've had uh, extreme floods this year and extreme uh, heat and drought. So we're beginning, you have to look at these things statistically. It's, weather is highly variable, but um, the climate dice are now loaded because of the human's effect on the atmospheric composition and that effect on climate. The gases that we put in the atmosphere have large effects on human health, both directly from uh, the air pollution. When we burn fossil fuels, we're putting uh, particulates in the atmosphere and creating more tropospheric ozone and the effects on human health are over the world there's more than a million people a year that die from air and water pollution but now in addition there's the effect of this pollution on climate and as climate zones shift and as we get more extremes uh, in the climate that too has an effect on human health. And the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has looked at and says we're already having a substantial number of um, deaths and illnesses due to climate change. The changes in atmospheric composition uh, and the changes in climate that are driven by the human-made changes in atmospheric carbon dioxide do have an effect on plants, on how well they will grow. In some places, it may improve the ability of some plants to grow, and more CO2 in the atmosphere causes uh, plants to be bigger. It's great for poison ivy. You know, we've looked, uh, scientists have looked at different plants and how they're affected, and poison ivy does great in a warmer, uh, more carbon dioxide uh, world. But, uh, you know, the places where we've been used to growing agriculture, many of those are going to suffer. Uh, it's, uh, it varies uh, from place to place, but in general, making climate extremes more extreme, that means heavier rains and floods when it, you do get the rain, and more extreme droughts, those extremes are not good for, uh, for agriculture and for your garden. So overall, uh, it's not helpful. It, but it, everything is consistent. We're going to need to stabilize atmospheric composition and stabilize climate if we want to have a uh, future for young people and, um, and for agriculture and your garden. Well, as far as I know, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is not having an effect on directly on uh, humans. Um, it, it's, its indirect effects are what we're concerned about. The fact that it is causing climate changes at a rate faster than any time in the history of the Earth. There have been times in the Earth's history when CO2 was larger than it is today, and it was a very different world. But those changes occurred slowly over millions of years and gave nature a chance to adjust to the changes. And uh, these changes are much more rapid, and we've set up our civilization based on uh, a stable climate of the last 10,000 years and stable sea levels. If we want that kind of situation to continue for our children and grandchildren, we're going to have to actually reduce the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. That means we're going to need to phase down 
fossil fuel emissions over the next few decades so that uh, the amount in the atmosphere will stabilize and begin to slowly decline.